In this lesson, we'll discuss groups and best practices for groups. So as we know, we can make a group of similar components or different components. We can add a lot of different things to groups, such as columns, walls, doors, floors, windows, mechanical equipment, and the list goes on and on. But the question really is, should we put all of those elements in a group? And are there negatives to that? Well, before we answer that question, let's look at the group and how we can actually place and use a group inside of Revit. I've already created a group in this lesson for the four columns. So if you zoom in and just mouse over one of the columns, it'll highlight the group and show you the group name. Group name is columns group. So this group exists now within Revit. Let's say you want to place this group somewhere else. Different view, different level, elevation. How do we go about doing that? One method is go to the architecture tab on your ribbon and then right in the middle of the screen in the model panel, there'll be a model group dropdown. Go ahead and click that. And since this group we made is a model group, click place model group. Now what'll happen now is you'll be holding a copy of that group that we first saw on our screen. And really you could place it anywhere now in this view. Now I'm just gonna use this view as an example. So I can just click and that group will drop to wherever I place it and another group will drop and I can keep clicking and clicking. And then when I'm done, I can hit the escape key or modify in the upper left. And now I have three groups within this view. Now all seem to work fine with this example. There were four columns and I placed them on the same level. But think about if you had other elements in this group, such as walls, and those walls were bound to specific floors or a specific height. Same thing with floors. If you go to place these at different levels, you may run into issues where the walls can't be constrained, where they'll be disjoined, where you'll have other types of errors that come up. So when we talk about best practices, you really need to think about what we're putting in the group. Yes, in some instances, we wanna add a lot of things because it can be beneficial, but depending on what those things are and how they're constrained, it may cause more issues than what it's worth. Some general rules if you are going to use certain elements like walls in your groups. Technically, if you create walls for groups, mark the wall height as unconnected. So that way you don't have to worry about it binding to a specific level. Also, whatever you're putting in a group, make sure it doesn't have any errors or warnings for how it's constrained or hosted. And again, another element for walls, if you're connecting walls that are in a group to walls that are outside of a group, Disallow joining the walls from inside and outside of the group. That way you won't have to worry about errors. So in this lesson, we talked about groups and best practices. We first looked at how to place a group that we've already created. Basically on the architecture tab in the model panel, from model group, we're placing a model group. We're free to pretty much place it anywhere within the view where we were at. Then we talked about best practices. Really, what should we or shouldn't we put in a group? Although groups can contain really almost anything, is it really wise or proper to put that in there? And we talked about issues, meaning where things are constrained to different levels, such as walls or heights, or if there's errors or warnings or joining of walls inside and outside of a group as best practices. 